Hi, Trevor here, reflecting on life through music. Welcome and thank you for stopping by. It is wonderful that you're here. Well, I trust you enjoyed my last video on the Bee Gees um, and not only their distinctive vocals because there's no one else in the music industry quite like them but also their incredible success um, 220 million million albums sold and also and that's without mentioning their their songwriting genius as well and in that video I talked about the fact that there might be something in your world that is distinctive something that you can create that changes the world somehow that's what we talked about with the Bee Gees because there was no, no one else quite like the incredible sound that these guys actually have. And as I hinted at last time, um, when I talked about three songs um, that probably bring out the distinctiveness of their vocals probably better than any others. And I talked about How Deep Is Your Love and um, Too Much Heaven, probably two of those songs that really bring out the vocals and this song today because we cannot talk about the Bee Gees without talking about the song and this album because uh, uh, in 1977 out came the movie Saturday Night Fever now <laughs> this is the movie that uh, made John Travolta a household name not only did he do Tony Milano's uh, character so well, but his um, dance moves have become signature moves, not just for him, but for the world in general, because this movie actually defined the disco era. This is the day when people just danced with utter abandon, abandon because they just wanted, they were getting carried away and swept away by music. So in 1977, out came this movie, Saturday Night Fever. Um, it was produced by Robert Stigwood. Now, he also went on to produce um, Grease and also, incidentally, was the manager for the Bee Gees. And so, hence the connection there. It was directed by John Badham. Now, he went on to um, direct a couple of other movies, including Dracula and also Blue Thunder, which is the one that had uh, Tom Cruise in it. This particular um, movie uh, grossed $237 million worldwide. Well, if you think about 1977, it's quite a, a big effort. And um, it was nominated, but unfortunately didn't win um, Golden Globe Award, Academy Award and BAFTA Awards. It was nominated in all of those categories. Um, the Academy Award was John Travolta for Best Actor. Um, amongst other awards that it was nominated for. Um, it, uh, the soundtrack, though, did win a Grammy, uh, some Grammy Awards in 1978 and 1979. And the, in 2004, the Grammys, Grammys inducted the soundtrack into the Grammys Hall of Fame for being a culturally significant and culturally impactful album. Now, of course, uh, many of the songs on the soundtrack were written by the Bee Gees. And so, you know, we're seeing them probably in their pop brilliance with some of these songs and some of these lyrics. Because the soundtrack um, sold 45 million albums worldwide. It was around 20 million in the US. And that puts it in the top 10 best sellers of all time. And incidentally, the, the second highest soundtrack of all time, the first one being The Bodyguard, which had Whitney Houston and Kevin Costner in it. So a culturally significant and culturally successful album. This album defined the disco era, unlike any other album before it and any other album after it, it defined the disco era and so in 1977, when disco was taking over the world, um, this certainly was a very significant uh, culture shaping album. Now, um, I had to watch this movie, actually. Um, I watched it last night because I must admit, <laughs> with all of this notoriety this movie has received, 
Um, I haven't never actually watched it. Obviously, we all know some of the iconic John Travolta moves in this particular um, movie, but I'd never actually watched it all the way through. And I must admit that what you think Saturday Night Fever is about and what it is actually about are completely two different things. And um, I think uh, if you haven't seen Saturday Night Fever, I suppose for me it came out in 1977. So I was around 12 years old at the time. And it's probably, there is not some so interesting scenes in this movie. And it wouldn't have been appropriate for me to watch it back then. Um, and I suppose it just kind of slipped my mind until I came to actually do this uh, video today. Um, I had to watch it just to get a bit of an understanding of what Saturday Night Fever is all about. And yes, believe me, it deserves the notoriety and the cultural significance that it has achieved. And it follows uh, the character Tony Milano, who was um, played by John Travolta. And I think the thing that defines this movie more than anything else is the disco strut. The strut that Tony Milano has. And certainly um, at the beginning of the movie where it's incidentally staying alive um, is at the start of this particular movie. You see him strutting his stuff, walking along the pavement, walking to a beat, you know, dressed up to the nine, beautiful red shirt, the whole thing. He is strutting his stuff along the New York sidewalk. Now, the strut represents a few things. It represents the fact that he was extremely popular. It represented the fact that he was a dance legend in Odyssey 2001, where, where he would dance. He would, people would just stop and look in awe at the incredible dancing this guy had. He was, he was respected and adored amongst his friends. The girls wanted to be with him. Um, it, and it represented all of that. It represented, I think he wanted the world to be the best it could be for him. And so he certainly had that way about him. He dressed up, he did all of the stuffs because he was such a popular guy. But that's only one side of the story because the other side of the story is probably where Saturday Night Fever um, really takes hold. And that is even despite this popularity and notoriety and everything else, his family life was dysfunctional. Um, he worked in a paint shop. And, and certainly um, with his bunch of mates, um, they got up to interesting things at times. And, and, I, and I think, uh, you know, what he was doing, he was strutting to, to almost chase away the stuff in his life that wasn't going so well. But eventually over time um, in the movie, and there's a particular part of the movie where everything goes wrong, everything is taken from him. He's dancing, a, a mate, um, girls' innocence, a whole heap of things is taken in one night. And the strut stops. The strut cannot strut any longer because he was putting off all of this, all of this other stuff um, because he was finding notoriety on the dance floor. But the other stuff ended up taking him over. The interesting thing about Tony Milano was he, he was a little bit thoughtful about his journey. He was a little bit... Um, yeah, I want life to be a bit different. I'm not quite sure what that is. I want life to be a bit different. But then the notoriety would take him over. Well, eventually the thinking took over the notoriety. And he, and the strut stopped. It's quite, it's quite a, an interesting movie, this one, to follow the journey of this guy. Um, from being, you know, adored by many people to being washed up and being, um, having the world ripped out from underneath him. You know, it's interesting, you know, um, what gets our attention in this world? Is it when things are going well, you know, where we're successful and the money's coming in and everything's going really, really well? 
Or is it where things are ripped apart, things are ripped away from you? That gets your attention. Whether that that is the universe doing that, or God doing that, or whoever it is that's doing it, whatever is your guiding light in this world. What gets your attention? It's probably when the success isn't there and you start to realise that the stuff that's was simmering under the surface with the success has now taken you over and you can't ignore it. You know, it, it takes it often takes things like this to get our attention, to take tragedy, to look at the tragedy and think, oh gosh, I really have to act here. I can't put it off any longer. I have to decide to act. <laughs> That's the way life can go sometimes. And so, you know, these times of, um, of despair and, 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 um, and your world being ripped apart is often the sign that your attention needs to be grabbed because it's potentially going in the wrong direction. Uh, what potentially, I mean, for Tony Milano in particular, I mean, we had a suicide, we had a rape dance contest, we had almost rape, we had uh, drunkenness, um, we had all of this stuff all happening in one night, and it took all of that stuff to grab his attention. Obviously, um, prior to that night, um, things were starting to unravel for him, and he was starting to think, but he was forced to take action um, at the end of this movie and to leave, leave that world behind. We don't know what the, uh, what the story, what, ha what happens with the story after that, but there, to me there seemed like a glimmer of hope and a friendship that would be able to sustain him going forward as he rediscovered himself in a new way. So there's hope in Saturday Night Fever and certainly the song Staying Alive, which I'll talk about in a minute, the lyrics very much are, are that. Talking, There's a part of the song where it talks about I'm going nowhere and I need somebody's help. Um, that, that, has, that, that has is exactly what this movie is about. And that realisation of needing help and going nowhere gets bigger and bigger and bigger as the movie goes on. And to a point where he can't ignore it any longer. So if you're in a situation right now um, where you're finding yourself in not a very good place, the world's been ripped apart and ripped out from under you a little bit, it could be that your attention is needing to be grabbed. And it's, it, this is the opportunity, I suppose, look at it as an opportunity for some growth and some change. Because it gets to the point where, you know, you know, life can't continue on the way it is and it has to change. So if you're in this situation right now, try and grab hold of what it is, God or the universe or whatever it is that, that uh, is your guiding light is trying to tell you and take that action. Because, you know, you can't be in that place of despair for too long before it really mucking you up. So it's compelling you to, to, to take action and so, the invitation, I suppose, today is for you to learn your lessons. Maybe get help if you need it, because you probably may need some help, and to move forward. That's what these moments um, of despair are all about. This is the times where we grow and we take notice of life a bit more. So I trust that will be an encouragement for you if you are in that situation right now. Perhaps the next step is to take action. Not action of revenge, not action of I'm going to get the person back, but action of what do I need to do to make my life even better. So that's the challenge for me as well, because I know for me, often I get a bit overwhelmed with life and a bit overwhelmed with things. And it's not easy to be to thinking to be thinking and to looking at what this action needs to be when you're in the midst of it. But I suppose the invitation is to be able to stop and to at least consider what's going on. Because there is so much at stake. Your life is at stake. 
So I trust that will be an encouragement to you today. Well, um, there are three there are three versions of Saturday Night Fever today of Staying Alive, and I thought I'd, I'd, you can choose one or watch all of them. We do have, um, I suppose, the extended mix um, from the movie. This is where you see uh, John Travolta strutting his stuff. Uh, so there's an extended mix of Staying Alive just through, through the few clips of the movie. There's that version. We then got the official music uh, clip of the Bee Gees singing Staying Alive because I thought, you know, nothing typifies the image of the Bee Gees more than this particular song and this particular song particular video and I thought also too I'd go to 1997 and we see them the three of them singing this song live at the iconic one night only concert in Las Vegas so if you want to see them singing this song live um, that's there as well nothing typifies to me the distinctiveness of the Bee Gees vocals and how incredible their harmonies are than this song um, if you think about how quick the melody is here, the fact that these guys can sing this stuff in harmony and sing it so well is such a compelling, amazing thing. Bearing in mind that 1997 is 20 years after 1977 when this movie came out, so the fact that they are still singing and actually playing instruments as well just shows how amazing the Bee Gees actually are. So um, I encourage you to look at, um, at those three if you would like. Um, and to Barry, um, thank you with your brothers Robin and Maurice and Andy as well. Thank you for the musical pop perfection that you brought to this world. You deserve the success and you deserve the album sales and you deserve the accolades that you have received. You deserve the, uh, the acknowledgement from the Queen when you got the uh, award from her a little while back, you, you and your brothers. Thank you for the incredible gift you brought to the world through your incredible songs, your amazing vocals, your distinctive vocals and your harmonies. Got on you, Barry, and certainly my condolences are with you as you have had your fair share of um, tragedy over, the, over your lifetime. So my thoughts are with you, but thank you for the incredible gift you have brought to the world. Because Staying Alive is an absolute pop masterpiece and how incredibly sung and delivered is this song. It shaped a generation, this song. It shaped the movement. It is a culturally significant song. And so as you as you sit back and and listen to this song, just realize you are you're looking at a, a legendary song here. So that's it for today. And, and by the way, I've also included my video from last time when I looked at um, the Bee Gees and certainly the distinctiveness of them and distinction in general. So if you want to recap on that one, feel free to do so. Well, that's it for today. Um, if you do like this video, um, please give it the thumbs up and I'd love you to subscribe. If you have subscribed and come back for another video, thank you very much. I really appreciate that very much indeed. So thank you very much. Well, um, we're going to go on to Belinda Carlisle next week. So until then, I'll catch you around.